Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Happy Independence Day. It is the 4th of July, and we celebrate our freedom in the world view. But do we celebrate the freedom and the liberty that we have in Christ and in our salvation? Do we celebrate that? Do we do something special for that? Is the word that I feel. So I'm in scripture in Hebrew 10. Um, just a little prelude. The Holy Spirit has testified. Um, and is talking about the new covenant. And it says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. Okay, the reason I wanted to prelude with that is because I want to call your attention and I will get over to that boy. That verse right now. I hope I, you can't hear my kids in there being loud in the house. But um, what the Lord has been showing me is is has been really hard for me to digest because I was so trained and so some would call it brainwashed or some would call it. Uh, misled or you know deceived that's probably the word for it so many of us have been deceived in thinking that once we give our sorry this is flipping around once we give our lives to Christ that once we do that no matter what no matter what happens we will not we are once we're saved we're always saved and i everything i found in scripture so far has not led me to believe that now i understand that i believe some use this verse this is the new covenant i will make with my people on that day says the lord i will put my laws in their hearts and i will write them on their minds then he says i will never again remember their sin and lawless deeds so he's not going to remember when he sees you at that point and you're following jesus he sees jesus you are covered by his blood yes absolutely hallelujah yes you are Yes, we are. Thank God. Thank God for our Savior. But what people don't go on to say is the rest of the chapter. Okay? So, verse 18 says, And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. So we no longer have to pay any sacrifices for our sin because Jesus covered us. So, let me just go back over here and do the rest of this. Um, this a call to pers persevere. Okay, this is so important. I feel like this is what people are missing, and I missed it big time. So, Hebrews 10, verses 19, starting with 19. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most highly place, most holy place, I'm sorry, uh, because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. From that verse, I literally saw a vision when I read it of a bunch of girls and women with tambourines, <laughs> of all things dancing unto the Lord, barefooted, like that probably sounded so hippified. <laughs> and I'm not a hippified person. So 
that was funny that that is actually what I saw in my head. And I feel like that is what we are to do. We are to rejoice and we are to praise and worship. And I feel that we are to sing to him and we are to give him all of the glory because he is God and he is worthy. He is the one. He is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus. So, dear friends, we if we, here's the kicker, y'all, okay? We're supposed to be excited and watching and watching for his return while he's coming close. Excited, praising, worshiping, at meeting together, showing acts of love towards one another and doing good works. But, dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was back then put to death with mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think of how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said it, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, he also said. The Lord will judge his own people. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So do not throw away this confidence. <clears throat> so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great rewards it brings you. Patience endures is what you need to know, is what you need now. Patience, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. So, if that doesn't explain it, I don't know what does. Because it says right there, clear as a bell. Let me find it. Let me go back. I have it over here saved. Dear friends, if you, we deliberately continue sinning after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectations of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. He says so many times in different ways throughout the Bible, if you're not for me, you're against me. You're either for me or you're not. There is no such thing as riding the fence. You're either following him. You're either worshiping him. You're either praising him. And, and let me tell you, if you want to know what, if you're worshiping him, what do you spend the most time of your day doing? Whatever the thing is that you spend the most time on, that is your God. If you the most thing, if you think you watch all day, if the thing you do all day long is play on Facebook, then Facebook is your idol. Facebook will get you cast into the lake of fire. I'm not saying Facebook, you can't get on Facebook. I'm just saying when you put anything above God, anything, okay? My Mountain Dews, okay? I had to have one every morning. You think I thought about God when I woke up in the morning? No, I thought about a Mountain Dew and a cigarette. That's what I thought about every morning when I woke up. Every morning for the last I don't know how many years. I've been smoking since I was 12 years old. I've been drinking Mountain Dew probably since I was three. It was my idol. It was something I put before God. Your children can be your idols. Their games can be their idols. Our TV can be our idol. Our vanity can be our idol. Our partner can be our idol. Our boyfriend, our girlfriend, our husband, our wife, our job our money, our toys, our boats, anything, anything can be an idol. 
anything. It's not saying that you can't do all these things. See, that's the enemy. See, the enemy's using the same story he's been using from the beginning of time. From the beginning of time, he uses the same line, and we always fall for it just hook, line, and sinker. Like we are the, we're the dumb girl that follows for the stupid guy like every single day. All of us as humanity, we are those dumb girls that fall for the stupid guy every time. Been one of those, by the way. I'm not calling anybody in particular dumb, but we can all be stupid sometimes, okay? The enemy, the basics of it, he comes, he comes to Adam and Eve, he says, Hey, that fruit over there, I mean, it ain't going to hurt you. He just doesn't want you to know. He just doesn't want you to know. He just wants you to miss out on something. It'll give you knowledge. They wanted, it was pride. It was, it was, it was power. And he used that line on them back then and he's using the same line on us today. He just put a different color bow on the package. It's the same basic concept. We think that because God's calling us to be follow him, that all of a sudden we don't have, we have to give up everything. Or we get mad because we're like, well, we don't want to stop watching this. And we don't want to stop watching that. And we don't want to stop doing this. And I don't want to stop dating that girl. And I don't want to not be able to do this. Okay, here's the thing. It's not about that. It's about following Jesus. Because when you actually follow him and you really follow him and you wake up in the morning thinking of God. And you wake up in the morning and go, God, what am I supposed to do today? Where am I supposed to go today? How am I supposed to get there today? What are my steps? Get in the word. You know, it, it's, it's that simple. He will actually show you and guide you and the Holy Spirit will lead you every step of the way. He will give you discernment. He will teach you. He will show you. It's the enemy who wants to take you down. He only has a short time left. He is coming hard for the church right now. He's coming hard for all of the believers, especially the believers. It's like, there's a really good example of the way that the enemy tries to cause division um, and, and strife between the church and the, and the believers and brothers and sisters. And this is a really good example and, and, and something that kind of ties into the whole thing of liberty. Um, it's 4th of July and a lot of people talk about liberty and don't even know what it means. And we were liberated from the law by the blood of Jesus. And if you go to Galatians, this whole chapter, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically um, you've got, let's see, Peter and Paul. Okay, Paul is going to tell Peter about his hypocrisy because there's the whole issue over, you know, there was the law and then Jesus came and now the law is no more. So there's so much torment between the churches of, of the New and Old Testament churches. That's why is because there's this whole argument over the laws. Well, this right here shows you about liberty. I want to take you down here to chapter, uh, what is this? This is chapter two. So let me go down here to the lower. Rather, I am the center. Okay. So it says, I'll give you a little context on verse 16. Yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ now, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Jesus Christ so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with God by just obeying the law. But suppose that we seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Would that mean that Christ has led us astray or into sin? Absolutely not. Rather, I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system of the law I already tore down. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all of its requirements so that I might live for God. So literally, you know, him coming and, and bleeding on the cross and dying for us and shedding his blood for us, it actually liberated us from that law. No longer is it our focus to try not to break those laws. 
that is what too many people in the church are focused on. Still focused on the old laws. Try not to break the law. They're so worried about not breaking the law that they're not even worship, worshiping or being in a true relationship with Christ. And it says, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I can might live for God, actually be able to focus on God and, and talk to God and have a relationship with God. You no longer have to go through blood sacrifices and all this stuff. The blood was already shed for you. My old self has now been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. So the thing is, he died for us, so we are, we have liberty. It doesn't mean that we should do certain things because sometimes they can become sinful. What's sinful for one person is not always sinful for another person. There are certain things that we know. Um, are, are, he wrote the law on our hearts, it says earlier. He wrote the law on our hearts, the natural law. He wrote the law on our hearts. So we know, and when we have, when we are open up to that, when we open our eyes, when we are awoken to that knowledge, when he increases that knowledge in us, when we um, start understanding the law that was written on our heart and in our minds that's when we have an internal guide the holy spirit guides us and shows us without having to think about the laws of the bible without our having to think about the old law and without having to try to rebuild the structure of that law we no longer have to do that we now have the holy spirit guiding us we have jesus christ that covered us we now don't have to sit and stress on that law all the time and worry about, did I dot this I? Did I cross that T? Now we can just keep focused on God and we can keep led by the Holy Spirit. And that is how we have liberty because we're not stressed out. We're not chained and shackled by all these rules. The Holy Spirit, if you are truly following God, will guide you and the laws in your heart already so there's certain things you're not going to do or that you're going to, your flesh is going to start dying and your spirit will take over and you will have that the laws in your heart so there's going to be things you're not going to want to do it's not because you can't it's because you don't want to that's the key that's the point keeping the law could not make us right with god then there was no need for christ to die if it would if we had to just go by laws if that would make us right with god then that's then why did christ have to come but he did, and he did sacrifice for us. And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John fourteen six. This is our way out. No other religion, no amount of keeping laws is ever going to get you there. You have to call on Jesus, and this is how you do that. The ABCs of salvation, admit, believe, and commit. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that this has spoken to someone's heart. You did not come by this. Please share. Um, subscribe and hit the like button. God bless and happy Independence Day.